Welcome to EP Daily. Today on the show, we discuss the latest announcements from Apple in the rundown. Plus, switch on your G diffuser because you've got a new look at Star Fox Zero. Entering Corneria's orbit. And then Jose and Ben jump into their respective driver's seats for a review of Forza Motorsport 6. Also coming up, we hit the ice with NHL 16. Steven Raju joined the Avengers with Marvel Heroes 2015 and much more today on EP Daily. Brought to you by EB Games. I'm your host, Victor Lucas, bringing you the latest in everything cool every single day. Prepare to think different. We penciled in some time for Apple in the rundown. Apple has plenty of shiny new gadgets on the way. The tech giant unveiled several new products at a special keynote event last week, including their long-rumored new Apple TV. Unlike the previous versions of the set-top box, this one will run apps and games and comes with a motion-sensing touch controller that basically turns it into an Apple game console. Several big publishers like Harmonix, Activision, and Disney have already announced games for the new Apple TV, and it will hit stores next month. Apple also announced the new iPhone 6S and bigger 6S Plus. They're more powerful than the last generation model and can record 4K video on the back camera, but the biggest new feature is called 3D Touch. It basically makes the touchscreen pressure sensitive, which means how hard or how light you touch something will give you different results. 3D Touch can also push back against your fingers, giving you distinct tactile feedback as if you're touching real buttons. It will be included in both the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus, which launched September 25th. Apple also announced the massive new iPad Pro, which comes with a 12.9 inch screen. There's no 3D touch under the hood, but it does include support for the new Apple Pencil Stylus with sensors that can detect how hard or how light you're pressing. Late Apple co-founder Steve Jobs was very outspoken about his hatred of stylus pencils, so hopefully this doesn't disappoint. Love September, man. Love all these big announcements that Apple does every single year. They get us excited about their new products. Scott Jones is here to help me yes. sift through all of this information. Let's talk about the uh, the Apple TV, which I think is the the biggest deal for our show because we love talking about video games. We play a ton of iOS games. It, show. It's a little surprising. You know, I'm just not sure if what's going to be available for the Apple TV is really going to differentiate itself from what's available for your phone or for your iPad what? because if you can play it on your phone or your iPad, why wouldn't you just do that instead? I mean, yeah. for sure it's cool. I just, again, as a consumer, as somebody who downloads a lot of games for my phone and for my tablet, I just don't know why I would ever want to play them in my living room. Well, this is the thing. I think that this is a pretty big statement. This is saying that games now from Apple mean something significant in people's living rooms, and they want to pursue this. Games have become a much, much you know, bigger component in their, uh, in their iTunes catalog than they could have probably ever imagined. I think as gamers, I think it's kind of surprising how much sort of middle of the road kind of video games there are and that yeah. we're okay with. I, I hear what you're saying, but they're gonna have Disney Infinity 3.0. They're gonna have the full console version of that. They're gonna have Guitar Hero Live. They're gonna have Skylanders Superchargers on there. There's some big titles that are coming to this device. I think that this is them just sort of seeding the territory and sort of getting people aware that now they can play through Apple TV. I wouldn't be surprised in a couple of years if this is successful, we'll see a pretty powerful game console option from Apple. Right now, we've got to go to something from Nintendo that I'm very excited about, Star Fox Zero. Entering Corneria's orbit. Fox is back. Dun, dun, dun. Talking about Star Fox Zero. There are a lot of people out there that have been waiting for new Star Fox. Now he is finally back. Why is this the perfect time for new Star Fox? I think there's a lot of people that know Star like Fox and Falco from the Super Smash Brothers games, right? But there's a lot of people that don't know where Fox came from. A lot of the longtime fans, yeah, you know, we get it. We've played Star Fox 64, we play these things. And for us, there's a ton of new things as far as like controls, the way you think about the levels, and putting really a new twist with new vehicles and new gameplay styles and really ways to think about levels in Star Fox. But this is a really good time for people that know Fox and Falco to get to know who they were, what their struggles are, and they're kind of the game that's about them. Now, it's been a while since we've seen Star Fox in his own game. I mean, he's obviously been kicking some major butt in the Smash Brothers games for a while now, but now he's back, he's on his own adventure. Can you give us a little background about what's happening in this game? Absolutely. So the forces of Andros, an evil, mad scientist guy, is really pushing, causing a lot of bad things to happen in the Lylat system. So Fox and his 
buddies, he has Falco Lombardi, which is one of his flight mates, and there's Slippy Toad, and Peppy Hare. And so the four of them, they're Team Star Fox, and they've been asked by General Pepper, who's kind of defending this home base of Corneria, to defend Corneria from the incoming attack and to push back those forces of Andros and save the galaxy. Yeah, you know, just another busy day. Can you go out and save the galaxy? Sure. Sounds like an awesome job for Team Star Fox. So what exactly is going to be new? What are they going to be doing new this time around? So there's a couple of new things. The ship, for example, the R-Wing, instead of just flying it, at any moment, you know, players can press the A button and it will transform into something called the walker. The walker can do different things. For example, if you're flying around an open area, you probably want to use the R-Wing. If you see some small opening in a building somewhere, if you want to fly into that space, press the A button and you can just stand on two feet and kind of walk around slowly and look and kind of navigate those tight spaces with the walker. In addition, there's you know, there's another vehicle, there's the Landmaster, which is returning uh, in the Star Fox series, and that one has a new, slightly new change. Um, if you press the A button, you can fly for a short amount of time with a giant tank with a massive cannon on it. The gyro wing is kind of like a drone that's used for kind of like those stealthy, sneaky kind of missions where you're uh, flying through, trying to avoid some searchlights, and you get down, let's say, um, and you have to press the A button, and uh, instead of transforming or doing anything different, it drops down this little robot that looks a little bit like a little blue robot called Direct Eye. And that robot can hack into panels, um, you can shoot if you press the ZR button from his eyes, he can pick up explosive boxes and drop them off onto like these giant ships. So a lot of different ways to kind of use these new vehicles, a lot of new mission types too. So a lot of new things for people that are longtime Star Fox fans. Star Fox Zero comes out November 20th, Game Volanche in full effect. <laughs> We've got to take a break, but when we come back, Forza Motorsport 6 is here after this. I'm Randy Pitchford, president of Gearbox Software, and this is my Star Wars story. When I was a kid, I lived in Los Angeles when Star Wars first came out in 1976. Uh, my father took me to see it at the Chinese theater. It was incredible. At last, where have you been? They're heading in this direction. What are we going to do? The next day, when my dad picked me up as a kid from school, uh, he had some action figures for me. He had a C-3PO, an R2-D2, and uh, Luke Skywalker, and I think a Stormtrooper. And man, this just took it to a whole new level because I'd seen the film, but now I was able to play with the toys. But you know, I didn't have a Darth Vader. And I always wanted a villain. I needed that villain action. Figure. Well, there was this kid at school that had a Darth Vader action figure, and apparently uh, they were pretty rare. Um, but at the end of school every day, this was, I think I was in kindergarten or first grade, uh, the teacher would have one person from the class that she would pick at random uh, put the chairs up on top of the desk before we left to clean up the room before, before we left for the day. And this kid with the Darth Vader figure was chosen, and he didn't want to do it. So he decided what he was going to do is offer up his Darth Vader figure to the kid that would put the chairs on all the desks and do the work for him. So of course, I like rushed at that, but my stepbrother, same exact age, were in the same class, he did the same things. So the, the kids said, let's have a contest. You do half the room, you do half the room. Whichever one of you finishes first, you're gonna get the Darth Vader figure. And man, I raced, I worked so hard, I was rushing, I was trying to put those chairs up. By the time I got the last one, I'd realized my brother had beat me. He was long finished. He already had the Darth Vader figure in his hand. And to this day, I am still jealous and envious that my brother beat me and he got that Darth Vader figure. Uh, that's, that's my Star Wars memory. A little behind the scenes trivia for you. After that Star Wars memory, Randy Pitchford and I became friends on Facebook. Uh, Memories! Accepted. That must have been so great for you to get that acceptance notice. Now we go to Steven Raju in Toronto because they've got a review for us. It's Marvel Heroes 2015. We are living in the age of Marvel. They you know, can do no wrong. They can do no wrong. The movies are awesome. Marvel is everywhere. Today we're looking at Marvel Heroes 2015, this is an action RPG MMO, which may look oddly familiar. Huh. Oh, wait, it's actually the same game we played like a year or two ago. When just, it was just called Marvel Heroes. Yeah, it's been <laughs> revamped for this year with a lot of new characters and some new content. I think the thing was is that when this launched, it was a really, really bumpy launch. And, you know, like all MMOs, it has gotten better over time. They've added stuff. So I can see some improvements here. But this is not what I want. It is basically, yeah, an action RPG MMO. You can play as a variety of characters in the Marvel Universe. Now, because it's free to play, you get sort of a core roster of B-listers you can start with. 
You have to earn or buy the really good heroes. In the 2015 version, we've we got everybody. We got all these variants. We got all the new heroes. We got Ant Man in there. We got like all the heroes that are sort of in the Marvel mix right now have been brought into the game. Tons of variant costumes, tons of skills, huge level caps. I dove back in as Hawkeye, you know, I, I'm Clint Barton, I'm the man, I'm the archer. But it's so hard to tell a story in a game like this because you've got like 30 Spider-Men running around. And even though the game explains like the dimensional rifts. Hawkeye, now with twice the awesome. Everybody just hops in where you are. It is super I, chaotic. Not only that, it's still really confusing, this game. Like, how many guys are in Avengers Tower trying to sell you something? How many guys are like, oh, this is the guy that you need to buy? The Hank Pym's so there can, now. So you can have, like, a, a super squadron, you know? Okay, look, it's free. And you know I love free. I love all sorts of free Well, it's things. free. Free, but you gotta, buy. If you want to get the super, like, packs of really exotic loot, or you want to get, like, the better heroes, you're going to either grind forever or there's an option to pay money. What a shock. What a shock. What a shock. So I think that it is a better game than when it launched two years I agree. ago. And yet there's still not what I want. There's not enough here. It is just really, really repetitive. And I mean, I think okay, the one thing I'll, 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 I will give it though is, is that, you know, while you can absolutely meet up with friends like in any MMO, this one actually does let you, you can do some soloing for yeah. quite a while. So I kind of like that flexibility of it because, you know, I'm an antisocial gamer. So that's, I'll, I'll give him some props there. But to me, this is a time waster. Like there's very little here that actually makes me want to come back. Look out world, Spidey coming through. What are you gonna give, Marvel Heroes 2015? Still a six for me. I gotta bump it up a little bit. It's a 7.5 for me now. Marvel heroes still making gamers everywhere feel heroic. Oh, that's right. Now I've got to go to San Francisco because Jose and Ben are here. They've got their racing gloves on. What are you doing? What is that? Thumbs up. Oh, a thumbs up for Jose and Ben. Well, we'll see. This is Forza Motorsport 6. This season, Jose. It's a good, good sound effect, my son. It's Forza's Motorsport 6, Jose. This is the third Forza game already on Xbox One. That's a lot of Forza games for one console that's only been out for two years. I know, right? Uh, but you're right. We've got Forza 5, we've got Forza Horizon 2, now we've got the sixth Forza game. I can't believe we're up to six. And when you play the game, you kind of can believe they're up to six because it just keeps getting a little bit smoother, a little bit better looking. Now, a lot of people, I think, are concerned because you're getting the sixth game in a series. It's starting to get a little bit of that franchisey kind of Madden Call of Duty vibe. Did you feel with Forza 6 that it was just sort of like a redo of Forza 5? A little bit. A little bit for me. I mean, there are some improvements this time around. They add uh, mod cards because your game isn't complete unless there's some kind of card-based system in there. Gotta get some cards. Gotta buy some packs and like some, some cards, which does some cool things. I mean, you can go in there and modify where you want to start on the racetrack. And they have different common, uh, uncommon, rare, special cards that you can unlock. Some of them start you a little bit more ahead on the pack when you're starting a race, which really okay. If you're playing on expert, I guess you're going to want to start two or three spots ahead. Forza is all about modifiers and customizability. I mean, it's all mod about cards. not just mod cards, though. You can also tweak every assist in the game so you can get more credits when you win a race. They've really gone bigger and bigger every year with this to make what is basically a hardcore racing simulation, yeah. an accessible hardcore racing simulation. This is a game that you don't actually need to be like an awesome simulation driver to be able to have success in, and I think that's the biggest kind of success of Forza 6. <laughs> It does feel a little bit similar to when you're playing those racetracks that were in previous sports games. I would remember as I'm driving through these tracks, and there's going to be a big curve coming up. I better slow down. You start hitting the dirt, your car starts doing wobbly wobblies, and then it's off into the like rock. And the water. Let's talk water for a minute. This is one of the big uh, additions. This was, I wish this was a water skiing game. It is incredible looking water. This is one of the big additions to Forza 6. Puddles. Who knew puddles would be such a big deal in games? It's a big deal because you start to hydroplane when you hit them in certain areas that you can spin out really badly and it just looks incredible. I, I play mostly in the cockpit view when you actually see your hands on the wheel and watching the rain splatter against the windshield and your windshield wiper and pushing them out of the way and little rivulets of water dribbling off. It looks so incredible. This is like some of the best water I've ever seen in a game and they just kind of threw it in like, oh, okay, you guys want water, we got water. 
there's definitely a lot to like in Forza 6. A whole lot of track racing, my friend. There is a lot of stuff here. Lots of cars, lots of tracks, lots of water. Lots, lots of, of fun. Lots of cards. And I'm going to give it a pretty good score. Lots of 8.5s. Hey, you're right, because I'm giving it an 8.5 too. Look at that. Two 8.5s. That's lots of them. At least two. Ah, uh, si, I love the Forza. Mm -hmm. I love my Azzurri too. Okay, listen, I'm going to jump into that game right away. Right We've after this. got to take a quick break. But when we come back, Vic gets the latest on the NHL series after this. Welcome back to EFI Daily. NHL 16 hits the ice today. So we thought we'd give you a rundown of all the new features before you hit the store shelves to pick up your copy. Here's Vic now with the game's producer, Sean Ram Jensen. The Rammer talking about NHL, as he often does on this show. Your playable goalie is an online play, so six against six. You've got a, a much stronger online team play kind of com com component there. You can have a couple players, or four players against four players. One of the cool things that I saw just visually is now we've got mascots running up and down yeah, the aisle. Yeah. Tell us about building that into the experience. The NHL's pushing mascots pretty hard. They debuted them at the All-Star Game last year in Columbus. And you know, for us, it's just continuing to fill up the environment, make the arenas as authentic as possible. You're going to see smoke come from Jumbotrons. Depending on where you're playing, you're going to see fire in Calgary. You're going to see the Tesla coil in Tampa Bay. So really taking our arenas to the next level. And the, you know, the mascots are just part of the NHL, part of the experience when you go to a game. And we're not going to put a camera on the mascot to show you have mascots in the game. You're going to be taking a face off. You see the mascot come run down, camera into the glass. So really just secondary movement in the arena. That's awesome. And you guys have this partnership going on with NBC, and you've got a whole graphics package and working with them in a live action capacity again. Tell us about trying to fit that into the gameplay experience. Yeah, NBC has been a fantastic partner for us, and as they update their graphics, they're sending them over to us, and you know we're really, really working closely with them to get their chance and get their commentary and get some of the arena sounds and things like that. So it's been a great, great partnership. The new broadcast graphics going to be in the game, and for year two with Doc, Eddie, and Ray Ferraro as well, so lots more story-driven content. Just really trying to replicate what you see on TV. One of the things that Scott and Marissa and I are always talking about with NHL is that it's becoming, it has become more and more for the purists, for the diehards out there. But I sense that with NHL 16, you're trying to uh, bring everybody back into the fold a little bit and sort of train them into the game and give them more sort of visual indicators. Yeah, we always said that hockey is the perfect sport for a video game. You're always involved in the play. It's fast paced. It's hard hitting. There's no out of bounds. So for us, it's how do we allow people to get to the fun fast? Maybe people aren't hockey fans. When they pick up your game, teach them the controls. So we have a new on ice visualization. They'll teach you the hints of how to play the game, teach you the basic control, teach you when to pass the puck, when to shoot the puck, how to aim, so that whether you're a novice user or an experienced user, you're always learning new things about the game. So it hasn't just been us that has been complaining that it's just getting too diehard and too purists then. Yeah, and I think if you look across the sports as a whole, you're going to see all of us kind of moving that way because we want everyone to be able to pick up our games and enjoy it. And we understand that our games are, do get more and more complex. And I, I mean, that must be an incredible challenge for you guys because you're balancing the needs of the hardcore, but you also need to just make it fun and accessible for anybody, right? Absolutely. I mean, we want everyone to pick up our game to have a fun experience, whether you're a novice user or an experienced user. So it's all about bringing the fun back. What's your favorite new sort of addition or something that you guys were relieved that you could bring back into the game this year, but what's your favorite new thing that's back or brand new thing that um, you've got in the game? My favorite thing this year is the EA Sports Hockey League being back. Our core fans want it. We said we were committed to bringing it back, and we have, and we work closely with our fans to understand what they want in the EA Sports Hockey League experience. And, you know, they told us three things from the outset. They said they want to play with user-created characters. They want to play with City Crosby, Alex Ovechkin. They want to be able to have an even playing field, so it's skill-based gaming. So their skills on the controller and their ability to play with their teammates will dominate and win more often than not, and also more customization for their characters. So we're bringing back all three of those elements to the EA Sports Hockey League. It's really, really exciting. We have games going on in the office right now, and they're really fun. We got some core community guys come in and play the game. They play for 48 hours straight over a two-day period. So it's really, really exciting, and I can't wait. You know, the feedback's been phenomenal so far from our fans since we just released our feature set. I'm playing that game right now, and Vic and I put on our shoulder pads to bring you our review of the game in tomorrow's episode. Don't go anywhere, because after the break, we've got your Twitter question of the day. If you want more EP, go to our website, epn.tv, for bonus content and full episodes. We're also on Facebook and Twitter.
Welcome back to EP Daily. It is time now for the best part of every show. It's the Twitter question of the day. And today's question comes from our old friend Gervais B.A. He is at GBA 95 Sonic 94 oh, Sonic taken. taken, of course. 2015 seems like the biggest year for Toy to Life games. Mm. Should Nintendo join in with an Amiibo platformer next year? And I think I can answer for Victor Lucas. Yes. Right here. Yes, they yes, should. Vic wants they they that. should make a lot of Amiibo Vic games. I have a lot of Amiibos. They should use those in lots of games. I mean, they're using them in interesting ways, like in Super Mario Maker, some really cool stuff there. And Yoshi's Woolly World has some really cool stuff too. But they, they need to build an amiibo type of experience. Right. You know, right. bring their toys to life. What yeah. other toys in your life would you like to see come to life? Uh, all of them. I love the, I mean, I... Any specifics? Well, I love those huge NECA Batmans. It would be amazing you to have... a little Scott doll? I, I don't have a Scott doll in there called that. Oh, you should figures. get a Scott doll. I would love to see someone um, do some high-end collectibles. I'm a big Hot like Toys what? guy. Do what with them, though? Do a high-end high -end toy integration with a video game type thing. That would be awesome. I love Good you. question. <laughs> if you've got a question for us, head up our website, epn.tv, where you can also watch full episodes of this show. And that's it for today's show, but tune in next time when we'll take a closer look at Halo 5 Guardians. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you tomorrow. EP would like to thank its sponsors, Nintendo, Xbox. EP's mobile coverage is brought to you by Gameloft, makers of Asphalt 8 Airborne, which you can play on your Android or iOS device for free right now. Master Chief is a big focal point of the story, and he's a character that's so important to us. We wanted to create different ways to explore him, both by surrounding him with other characters that he knows and trusts with Blue Team, yeah. which is a squad of Spartans that he's grown up with and trained with, and then by introducing this new cast of characters with Fire Team Osiris and Spartan Locke, use that as another lens to examine him as a character. You've completed your mission, Spartan Locke. Mine is just beginning.